Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Miles Free, Director of Industry Research and Technology for the Precision Machine Products Association. I'm here, <laughs> thanks for that. Um, I'm here with Roger Boswell at Hydromat. Roger's going to walk us through the new technology and the developments on the Epic II. So one of the things that's really interesting to me about this technology is it doesn't look like precision turning, but it actually is high precision turning. It has new technology, new precision, and this is really about high volume production. Roger, why don't you tell us a little more? Thank you, Miles. Test, I'm on, thank you. Welcome uh, everybody to Hydromat's booth. I'm Roger Boswell. I'm Vice President of Sales and Applications for Hydromat. Is that too loud? Uh, I've been with the company for 27 years. Uh, fortunate to have kind of gone through the different departments from a field service technician, project engineer, into our sales group and uh, applications. Uh, with me today is Dave Collier, one of our applications engineer. Dave's been with our company for 24 years as well. Spent 23 of those building machines on our floor. One of our machine builders and uh, in our sales engineering for the last year, working on uh, applications and RFQs. So we're pleased to announce and introduce first time Epic II. What is it? Can I get anybody to ask me what it is? <laughs> Excellent question. But before we answer that, let's kind of get back to some of the basics Miles touched on. The Hydromet rotary transfer machine is a progressive manufacturing approach to metal cutting. It's a multi-spindle application where we're breaking up the tooling operations station by station. Typical operation is the first step is loading the raw material. That can either be bar fed or as a blank loader. Here our setup today is a 12 foot automatic magazine style bundle bar feeder where we can pre-stage the bars up on the magazine and have it automatically feed in the machine. So the first operation, a little bit different than a lathe or a multi-spindle type process is our first operation is to load and cut off the material or to load that raw, uh, raw blank forgings. The remainder of the configuration is a combination of some single axis drilling, reaming spindles. Uh, we have two of our two axis profile turning spindles. Uh, they have a dy dynamic head on there. We can do any single point turning in an, a, the X and Z axis. One of those two axis profile turning spindles, we've added a servo motor so that we can monitor the C axis for single point threading. So we're making multiple passes and uh, producing the OD thread by single pointing. Hello. Uh, the remaining of the configuration is our three axis modules here, this uh, large, larger wide enclosures controlling our X, Y, and Z motion. We use that for tool positioning, giving it an X, Y coordinate, um, interpolate milling, stitch drilling operations where we can have, say, uh, redundant features and we use the same tool and having different locations. Thread milling as well uh, through circular interpolation creating that, uh, that ID, those ID threads. And uh, here in position 10, which is right here, uh, we have a 90 degree uh, right angle attachment in the machine doing a cross for, uh, hole. So we're able to drive that cross drill into the workpiece using the uh, XY coordinate system. With the Epic Control, what are the uh, operating features compared to our legacy machines? Traditionally, on the segments, on the ring line around the bottom, you do not see any of the uh, manual on-off knobs that gets the legacy stop machines, the ST1 impulse for the units to activate. All the units now are CNC controlled, and the machine automatically controls the spindles you know, from the control system. Let's do a, a pendant demo here right now. What we're looking at is the front screen, showing us all of our status indicators, the outward circle with the blue and red circles on it. There's indicating the horizontal units. The center green circle is uh, showing our work holding. Basically, uh, all 12 stations are filled at this time. 
with a good part as the machine recognizes. Pick the status there. Yeah. Over here on the collets column, the third line down is a yellow uh, dot, which would represent a bad part. If we had tool monitoring and we had a, a tool that would have failed in the process, that green dot would turn to yellow. And the machine would go into a uh, time delay fault where that unit would immediately retract. The rest of the spindles would complete their operation. Uh, and then the machine would shut down with the alarms with that particular station faulting out. Go to the station screen. For uh, programming, it's under one particular part number, but we program by station. Dave's drove it down here into spindle three. Uh, it's a profile turning spindle where if he needs to make a uh, offset or a diameter uh, program adjustment, he can go right here and look at the program just for station three. He doesn't have to cipher through other lines of code for other types of spindles in those operations. Very quick and easy for him to get to. Uh, one of the upgrades with Epic 2 is a feed, ride, feed rate override control, which is uh, beneficial for the initial, some of the initial part setups. Dave can single block or single step the, the tool or the spindle through his program and control that feed rate, even turning it down to zero if he needs to stop and observe, make sure that it has no uh, clearance interference issues. And that's one of the access screens for making those offsets. On the left hand side is a uh, cheat sheet that kind of goes to each type of spindle. Uh, we, again, we have the single axis units, the two axis units, three axis modules, and it's a guide G&M codes of, for that particular type of programming, depending on what type of motions need for that application. New as well on the EPIC-2, uh, we've uh, installed temperature probes in all the machines. So if we go back to the main screen, right there, there's actually the temperature of the machine. We have applications today that the tolerances are such that we'll add uh, coolant chillers to maintain a thermal stability and maybe even have to set the uh, upper and lower limits that the machine be in automatic based on how the machine is centered and qualified. So some advanced uh, electronics today in the machine tool. Inside the machine, everything is pretty much quick change. The work holding is a quick change collet system. We've eliminated the need for uh, threading in the collets using the buttress thread, uh, having to set the tension for the collet that's uh, manually done independent of each operator that might be doing that collet change system with uh, the Epic Quick Change system. It's a three prong. You're able to put the collet in a quarter turn and it's set and repeats itself through the design of the, of the work holding system. Same way with the tooling. Uh, the spindle adaption is an HSK spindle adaption for the drilling, reaming, rough turning spindles. Dave's going to demo here. Uh, changing out a tool head. We could have got an alarm or a tool counter fault that this tool was expired. The ideal plan would be have a spare head that we preset on our preset unit. It's preset, hold up a little bit more for me if you could, that I can see exactly what it is. That's an HSK spindle adaption. It's a combination turning uh, with an ID internal collet holder that we could do some spotting or chamfering. So the, again, the ideal situation would be have a, an additional tool head that has been preset offline while the machine is running production, have our new head, reconditioned head, pop it in the machine. It's a torque wrench. It, it snaps when it's tight. Then he's able to shut the lid, get the machine back into production. And once it's going, then go to the preset and change the tooling in the, in the head we just took out. So we're going to put the machine in automatic cycle, let you hear it run. It's a very quiet operation. The, the, the main noise you hear is the spindle motors that are revolving. Coolant pump just kicked in. But again, it's not a production system where the material is revolving. 
You know, we're literally pushing the material in the machine. Inside station one, there's a saw which cuts through, arcs through, and cuts off the slug of which we start making the workpiece from. And then again, it's an, an advanced manufacturing approach station by station where the main turret advances the workpiece. We get to the end of the first side, position six for this setup, where we can invert the part, switching the part from side one to side two. And then here on side number two, we finish the back side of the workpiece. Did everybody see one of our technical bulletins? Uh, we have those available for you. I'm going to get in and explain a little bit of the difference of the Epic RT and our Epic 2 system. On the back side, we've listed out about eight items from the computer, the operating system, the communication system, the software, a common control valve, and the scales. So today, Epic 2 is a more common Bosch PLC slash CNC control system. We're using their dual circles ring and an ethernet for the communication. We lift it, we've eliminated the Profi bus. Also from a control side, the, the uh, PMAX that used to uh, reside in the units from a multi-axis operation has been replaced by the Bosch control. From a provide Improved accuracy with the absolute positioning of the scales. We're using a uh, Renishaw type scale now for the closed loop feedback system. Again, it's a common valve. We don't have the smart valves or the servo valves anymore. They can be uh, replaced and programmed uh, more remotely. They don't have to be pre-tuned from our facility. And of course, uh, being an ethernet type connection, we can go in uh, through the internet and provide uh, offsite programming support and troubleshooting you know, through, uh, through the software. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir, Lloyd. So checking, um, pretty much that would be an um, index table upgrade. There's um, two styles which we could go to, which would be a still an outboard type work holding instead of a draw type collet system that could have a, a two jaw chuck. Um, our indexing chuck machine is, a, is another type of machine model where the work holding is more vertically mounted and it has a, more of a satellite work fixture arrangement. That's traditionally just a, a chuck style machine. But the collet machines can be converted to a, to a chuck. Any other? All right, thank you for your attendance. Have any questions, come and see one of us uh, application peoples and we'll try to answer them for you. Thank you.